I used to pretend that the reason why I wasn't reason why I wasn't eating any ham or pork ribs was because I was a vegetarian. That way, I, I I figured I wouldn't have to connect my dietary habits with the Bible, and now that way I can like avoid um, controversial conversations because I know how Christians get because real hardcore Christians, I mean, they'd be offended at you for even suggesting that it's a, a sin to eat certain meats cause you see they follow the apostle Paul and so they can eat what they want to eat and for you to come along and say that you don't eat what they eat because you consider it simple to eat what they eat every day that's offensive offensive to them <laughs> Oh, boy. Yeah. You not eating pork is offensive to them. Because they eat pork. So they be like, what you trying to say? You trying to call me a sinner? Because I eat pork. You saying it's a sin to eat pork? So, you had this problem with the Judeans back then. And you had the uh, Gentiles flooding the church, they're coming into Paul's church, and Paul accepting accepting them in as they as they were, uh, not enforcing the dietary laws, so these Gentiles were coming in, and the Judeans back there, rather than uh, be offended, uh, offend the Gentiles who were coming in rather than offend them when the Gentiles offered them to break bread with them and offered them meat, you know, which oftentimes it was unclean. You know, it was unlawful. It was unclean. Uh, either it had been, what, offered in prayer to idols. So most of the Judeans were like, you know, they were just like, they would go vegetarian. You know, rather than be confronted by the Gentiles who were, like I say, they, they had began to dominate the churches of Europe. So rather than be confronted with them, the, and these Gentiles actually looked down, they looked down on the Judeans in the first place. They looked down at the Judeans because the Judeans the Judeans, the Jews, the black Jews, who kept the Mosaic law, they were considered to be weak. They were, they were considered by the Gentiles to be, con they were considered to be weak in the faith. Uh, they considered those who tried to keep the law as being either weak in faith or just Stubborn, hard-headed Judaizers. They call them Judaizers. Uh, they were they either considered them Jews who were weak in the Christian faith, or Jews who were just outright rebels, uh, apostates, Judaizers. The Gentile. These are. Uh, Euro Gentiles that began to uh, began to dominate the Pauline churches up in Europe. They began to uh, dominate, outnumber the uh, Judeans, and. Uh, that's when they first began their uh, uh, having that superiority complex. They began to feel superior to the black Jews, the Judeans, whom they uh, they considered to be weak in the uh, the new Christian faith. And that was uh, started by Paul. Because anyone who still clung to the uh, 
Mosaic law of the Judaic faith, it was looked down upon by the uh, Gentile Christians. They were looked down upon first. First, they were looked upon with pity as being weak in Christian faith. Then if, if they persisted in keeping the laws, statutes, commandments, culture, or traditions of the Judea, Judaic people, then they were looked at with suspicion as one who is uh, a deviate uh, and a, a, a rebel, an apostate, a Judaizer, they called them. They called them Judaizers. And uh, a Judaizer was considered to be an enemy, an enemy, an outright enemy of the Christian faith which uh, eventually became equivalent with being an enemy of the Christian state. Once uh, Christianity became the state religion. You hear this over and over again, this foolishness about the Jews persecuting uh, the Christians. That never happened. It was, it was the Christians persecuting the Judeans, the black Jews. All throughout Europe, it was the Christians persecuting the Judeans. Don't fall for the garbage about you had like pagan Rome were persecuting the Christians. No, the Christians were pagan Rome. The the, the Romans, the pagan Romans were Christians. And there were originally a lot of uh, Judeans uh, throughout Europe, but a lot of Judeans began to leave Europe and and flee into uh, Africa and Asia because of the uh, persecution of the Euro Gentiles who uh, persecuted anyone who um, practiced the uh, Judaic faith. So the Christian followers of Paul were the persecutors. They were the persecutors of the Judean followers of the anointed prophet Yahshua. Yahshua, uh, Yahshua ben Yosef. After these uh, Gentiles started to increase and their numbers began to grow. They began to dominate in the churches throughout Europe, which was Paul's churches. Uh, because the uh, you had your Messianic Hebrew congregations of Asia and, and North Africa who followed the anointed prophet, Yahshua ben Yosef, uh, Uh, his brother uh, James, James the Just, who headed the uh, the uh, African church in, in Jerusalem, they didn't have much dealings with uh, uh, Paul and his European churches, mainly because of, of Paul's insistence, uh, 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 his um, being determined to start a ministry among the Gentiles, the Europeans, contrary to the instructions of uh, Yahshua uh, ben Yosef, the, uh, the uh, Messiah, the, the black Messiah. Had, he had plainly instructed his apostles, his two apostles, to uh, stay away from the, the Euro Gentiles, uh, to no, not go into the way of the Gentiles, you know, but to go only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Uh, Paul, Paul was a, a, a self-appointed apostle. It was Paul's self-appointed mission 
to teach the Gentiles. Not only did Paul uh, preach to the Gentiles, but he uh, actually preached lies to the Gentiles. He taught the Gentiles lies. He purposely taught lies to the Gentiles uh, in order to uh, to start his own ministry. So these pagan Gentiles, as they began to uh, fill up the churches in Europe, the Pauline churches, they began to bring in uh, paganism into Paul's European church. They, they brought in their pagan traditions into the church. They accepted Paul's uh, mythical Jesus Christ. Not the historical anointed prophet Yahshua ben Yosef, but the Jesus of Paul's mythology, the Jesus of Paul's vision. These pagan Gentiles, they could identify with Paul's uh, mythological Greco-Roman idea of Christ, the God-man, the, the demigod, Jesus, Christos. They could identify with that. So, of course, the, the, the Gentiles began to, to fill uh, Paul's churches. White folks began to fill the churches up. And as soon as they outnumbered the black Judeans, uh, the black Judean followers of Paul, many of them had to flee you know, into Africa and Asia, North Africa and Asia. See? And the few uh, black Judeans that stayed, they tried to keep their Hebraic culture and identity. You know, even some, some of them continued to practice the Judaic faith. But uh, it became very, very hard. But it was Paul's intention all along to introduce the Judeans to this, to this new world, universal Catholic faith. That's what Catholic means. It means universal as opposed to nationalistic. Universal as opposed to national. Paul, Paul uh, changed a national faith into a universal faith. You see. The original faith of the Messianic believers of the prophet, Yahshua ben Yosef, was a black Hebrew nationalism. It was black nationalism. The anointed prophet, Yahshua ben Yosef, was a black Hebrew freedom fighter. He was a freedom fighter. He was a black... Hebrew revolutionary, freedom fighter. And that's what they don't want you to know about the real Jesus. They don't want you to they don't want you to know that the authentic messianic movement was a black nationalist movement. The original concept of the kingdom of the Almighty was nationalistic. That's right. The kingdom of heaven was, and it is, the restoration of the black Hebrew nation of Israel. The very concept, the very concept of the kingdom to come is nationalistic.